Hi, this is Amanda from Bank of North Dakota. Um, today we're going to be doing another session on college planning, um, but we're going to wait a little bit uh, for some viewers to get on before we go ahead and get started. And I'm going to make sure that I share this on my Facebook quick. All right, so go time. All right, so hi everyone. This is Bank of North Dakota on Facebook Live. Um, at Tuesdays at four o'clock, every single Tuesday at four o'clock, we are going to be talking about uh, different topics in regards to paying for college and planning for college, even some stuff on financial literacy, maybe some budgeting in the future. So just make sure that you uh, like us on Facebook and then also to turn on your live Facebook notifications so that you know exactly when we're live, so you can keep up to date on all kinds of information. Um, new topics will be addressed weekly. Um, we're going to be doing this every week, so we're gonna be talking about a lot of different stuff. Um, so, my name is Amanda, and I'm the University and Student Development Coordinator here at the Bank of North Dakota. Today, we're going to be talking about choosing a college. So, if you have any questions in regards to this topic, we will be asked, answering them on the live feed as they come in. But if you do want to ask a question privately, just send us a direct message and we will get that answered the best that we can. All right, so choosing a college. Uh, let's say you're a senior in high school right now who's still trying to make your decision, a junior who's just getting started, or maybe you're a transfer student who's thinking about transferring to a different college. Um, I'm gonna give you uh, some guidelines on the things that you can do to uh, Choose, choose a college the best that you can. I'm gonna give you some basic tips, um, some more advanced tips, and then I'm gonna actually talk to you about some things that you shouldn't do. You might not always get uh, the tips for things that you shouldn't do. So uh, the basics, four tips for the, the basics. Um, whenever I have worked with students in the past on choosing a college, I always recommend that they ask themselves four questions. Uh, the first, um, what size college and what type of college do you want to attend? Um, as far as size, some students like that smaller, more intimate uh, classroom environment, that smaller student body, and some like the really, really big, large campus experience. There's pros and cons to each, of course, and to each student, it's a very um, individual experience. Uh, small campuses, you have that uh, smaller, more personalized approach. You're going to have some, um, you know, smaller classes. You're going to have more personalized interactions with your professors than you might at a large in a larger university. Uh, larger colleges, you'll probably have a lecture class with you know, a couple hundred students, but you might have more class offerings, you might have more majors to pick from. So there's definitely pros and cons to those, each, each size of college. And then of course, the type of college. Are you hoping to go to a large public university, a small liberal arts college? Are you looking for something a little bit more rural? Are you looking for something um, a little bit more urban? That's another important factor because that's going to uh, create a little bit of diversity in your college experience depending on what you pick. So the size and type of college is number one. Uh, number two, distance from home. How far away from home are you willing to go? Are you willing to go six, seven, eight hours or do you want to go to the college right in your backyard so you can come home and visit your parents? Quite frequently, um, it's up to you. Some students are comfortable going a couple hours away, you know, six, seven hours away. Some want to stay, stay right here. Um, that's largely up to you and what you want to do. Uh, don't discount a college just because it's right here um, in your backyard. There's a lot of colleges that might be a really good fit for, for students that are, are right here, um, that are right there in, in your backyard. So don't discount a, a college just because it you're the most familiar with it. Number three, um, when picking a college, make sure that college has your major. I think that's pretty much a no-brainer, but I have worked with students who loved a college, but there wasn't a major at that college that they were interested in. Um, so make sure when you're choosing a college that they have your major, and not only that, that the college has a good program in that major. Um, some, college, some majors, you can throw a rock and hit 10 schools with that major, but a couple of them might be a lot better than the others. So that's one thing to explore. Make sure that program is really, really good as well. Um, and then the last thing to, or, and then while you're thinking about majors, most students 
change their major at least once during their, their college their college career. I was one of those students. I changed my major fall of my senior year in college. So graduated on time. But I had explored majors in advance that the college offered that I wasn't necessarily interested in when I picked. Um, that's really important because just in case you love the college and you do change your major, it's really good so you can stay there and not have to transfer. So my last basic tip uh, for choosing a college um, is make sure that you match the academic requirements. A lot of colleges have um, admissions requirements that uh, pertain to the numbers. So your test scores, your ACT and your SAT, and then your high school GPA. And a lot of times those requirements will allow you to get in to the college itself. Um, so make sure that you know you match those requirements so you can, can get in. And not only that, at some point in your college career, usually during sophomore year, you're going to have to apply to your major and get accepted. Um, and sometimes, actually a lot of times, those requirements are a lot different than general admission to the college. So just make sure that you know what the admissions requirements to get into the college are, and you make sure that you know what the acceptance to your program is as well. Um, and just make sure you work hard during high school to meet those requirements and work hard while you're in college so that you're accepted to your major. And keep in mind, just because you meet those admissions requirements and those requirements for your major doesn't mean that you're going to be accepted into the school or into the program. Um, ooh, it looks like we have a question. Um, hi Amanda, are there benefits of staying in North Dakota to go to college? Mariah, that's a great question. Um, you know, there are some benefits to staying in North Dakota, uh, specifically because North Dakota is one state that has excellent grant programs for North Dakota residents who stay in North Dakota to go to college. Um, and if you go out of state or, you know, out of state folks coming into North Dakota, they don't have those same benefits. So if you're a North Dakota resident who stays in North Dakota to go to college, there are several state grant programs and state scholarship programs that, that you benefit from. Plus, if you do need student loans, you get some special uh, perks with the Bank of North Dakota deal loan. So, great question, Mariah. All right, so now that we've covered the basics of the top four questions that you should ask um, when making your short list for colleges, um, now you know your criteria. So make a list of three to five colleges. You don't necessarily have to do that many, but I always recommend three to five to give yourself some options. Now you can start to dig a little bit deeper um, into these colleges. Um, and then you can start digging into fit. And fit refers to how um, to how you kind of fit into the culture with the things that you've defined as things that are important to you. So you want to make sure that you fit. Um, and the best way to determine if you fit a college and then if the, the college fits you is by doing a campus visit. And those of you who tuned in last week with Shar and her guests, they talked about the importance of a campus visit and how to make the um, most of the campus visit when you, you go. Um, so biggest thing, um, when you go on a campus visit, just make sure that you are visiting with current students. Visit with faculty and professors. Look around and see what the campus is like and pay attention to how you feel. Because um, a lot of times that feeling is huge for students. If you're not feeling it, you're not feeling it. When I've worked with students in the past on um, campus visits and helping them choose a college, I've had students who have been so, so set on a certain college, and then they go to the campus visit and they hated it. Um, there's nothing wrong with, with having your campus visit decide your, um, make your decision for you. A lot of times that, that your campus visit will make or break your college decision, and that's okay. Um, if you don't feel comfortable at the college, then you're, you know, you're probably gonna transfer it. So don't even worry about it. So make that campus visit. That's a huge deal. Um, and then of course, cost. Cost is a big deal for a lot of stu students and a lot of times for their parents. Um, so when you are really you know, getting into the weeds with uh, looking at colleges, you'll probably see what's called a sticker price. And that's going to be the published price that colleges um, put out uh, for, for public, public consumption. But oftentimes that's not what, what college students pay because a lot of colleges have uh, scholarship programs, they have grant programs, 
And then when it comes time for financial aid season, you're going to go ahead and get your grants, your scholarships, all of that to bring the cost of college down before you have to start relying on scholarships. So pay attention to that cost and ask the appropriate people on your financial aid office uh, to, to really talk about that. So those are the things, kind of a guideline for what you should do to choose to choose a college. Um, of course, this is highly individual. There's no one size fits all. So do the best that you can do um, with that. So that is the um, things to do while you're choosing a college. But I'm going to recommend a couple things maybe to avoid when, when choosing a college. Um, don't be a follower. That, that's a big thing I've seen a lot. Uh, don't follow a group of friends. Don't follow a friend. Don't follow your significant other or a sibling to college. Um, this is your four years, six years, however long you're in college, to really set yourself up for your adult life, whatever that might mean, um, for your career path, for your interests, for a lot of different things. So really use these four years to, to work on you, uh, just because you know this is your time and this is, you're setting yourself up for some really great things um, ultimately during these four years. Um, number two, don't be pressured by parents, by teachers, or other adults. Uh, it's no doubt that these parents, teachers, you know, whoever, that they do have a big influence on you and then and that they're probably, you know, helping, maybe helping you pay for college as well. But if you're being pressured in to go to a college that you're not interested in, if you're going to, you know, maybe major in something that you have no passion for, you're probably not going to be happy going to that college for majoring um, in that program. So, you know, do, do what you need to do to you know, create your, to forge your own path to, to do you. So it looks like we have a, another question. What are some things I should look for when looking for a college? Hey, Olivia. Um, so, uh, top things, um, you know, the things that you're looking for in a college, that's highly individual to you. Um, the four questions that I would ask when, you know, evaluating what kinds of colleges you want, size, distance from home, um, does the college have your major? And then am I a match to the school? And match basically is the numbers. Do, does my ACT or SAT score fit the admissions requirements? And does my GPA um, fit the admissions requirements as well? So definitely look for those four things. Um, so getting back to things you shouldn't do. Um, this next tip is very, uh, this is like my personal favorite tip. And it's don't be so laser focused or locked in on one major, on one idea of what your college experience is going to be like, um, or one activity. Uh, just college is, you know, basically the time in your life where you're going through the most changes. So if you are locked in to your one major, your one activity, you're not going to open yourself up to um, taking part in an activity that absolutely scares you or taking another class that just might uh, change your mind on your major, become a career someday. Um, colleges, there's thousands of people at lots of campuses from all over the United States and even all over the world. So just, you know, open your mind, take part in new experiences, uh, join a club that scares you, take a class that you never thought you would and talk to some new people. So um, don't lock yourself in to one thing. That's probably my biggest advice. Um, so yeah, that is all that I have for you on your tips on how to choose a college and some tips on what not to do when you're choosing a college as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and close um, the, the video. We're still taking some comments. Um, I'm seeing some likes coming in, so that's exciting. Um, but yeah, thanks for tuning in today uh, to watch Bank of North Dakota on Facebook Live. Next Tuesday, we will also be live at 4 o'clock. We'll be talking about Student Loans 101. Um, and don't forget to like BND and turn on your live notifications, um, just so you can be notified every single time that you go live. And tomorrow, it's going to be extra important because at noon tomorrow, we are having a special Facebook Live event directly from a high school in North Dakota. And we're going to be announcing our $3,000 Real Deal Scholarship recipient. So make sure you like us, turn on those notifications so you can join us for that extra special event. So, oh, thanks, Allie. <laughs> so, all right, thanks, everyone.